And we're back. So let's continue our chapter 14 discussion pertaining to products. Next, let's talk about the packaging of the product and how packaging can actually change the product. So companies often use packaging to change and improve their basic product. Examples may be squeezable ketchup bottles compared to the glass bottle. Square paint cans with screw tops instead of the older paint cans where you have to pry them open and single use spice packages. So good packaging can also make a product more attractive to the retailer. So I'm curious, have you ever tried or bought a product just because you like the actual packaging? There are some key functions of the packaging. First of all, the package should attract the buyer's attention. The product inside should be tamper-proof and theft deterrent. That's why now often you will see certain products, whether it is, say, products such as uh, for, uh, for laundry, will tell you it's been tamper-proof. If this still is broken, do not buy this product. The product should be easy to open and use, but it should also be safe. The pack should describe and give information about the contents inside of it, explain the benefits of the products, but also provide warranty information and a warning. So especially when it comes to medication, any warnings pertaining to use of that medicine should be indicated on the actual packaging. The pack should also get indication of the price, value and how to use the actual product. So therefore, packaging is very important when it comes to your product development. So packaging has more promotional burden and sales responsibility. So again, what we're saying now is that we are dependent upon how a product is packaged in order to sell the actual product. But there's certain information, again, that should be included on that package. Information on packaging is regulated by the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act and the Food and Drug Administration. So again, especially when you're dealing with food items, there's certain information that must be on that packaging as requirement from the FDA. Bundling is when a group when a group of two or more products together or services and pricing them as a unit. An example would be a financial institution may bundle advice with purchases. So a, a finance institution may say that we can offer you advice on your retirement, offer you advice on investment, how to save money, how to budget, on taxes, and they'll bundle those services all together with a price that they hope is going to be acceptable for that by that actual consumer. Branding and brand equity. So what is branding? A branding is a name, symbol, or design that identifies the goods or services of one seller or group of sellers and distinguish it them from the goods and services of competitors. So we talk about Nike, Adidas, Converse, Rolex, Lexus, BMW, or brand names that give product a distinction that tends to make them attractive to consumers. Now a trademark is a brand that has exclusive legal protection for both its brand name and its design. See, so if you think about the Nike symbol or the BMW logo, those, so the BMW is a brand name and they also have an exclusive design for the BMW symbol. Now, how do companies decide how to pick a name for their product. Well, the name sure ensures 
It's what customers will actually call the product or company, i.e. BMW. Make search is easy to remember, not so clever. So you want to make sure that the name is something that would be easy to remember by the customer. So again, I keep saying BMW, but that's a very easy name to remember. Keep it short and sweet, i.e. BMW. Don't add extra words. Test out your idea. So before you come with a name, do a survey, whether it's with your employees, some type of focus group to see how they gravitate to that actual name and use the name as much as possible. So your name should be included in all your forms of advertising so that the public is used to hearing that particular brand name. Okay. We'll next talk about branding categories. First, you have manufacturer brands. The brand names of manufacturer that distribute products nationally. So if you're talking about appliances, whether it's, it's Whirlpool or LG or some other manufacturer, then you have your dealer private label brands, products that don't carry the manufacturer's name, but carry a distributor's or retailer's name instead. So if you're shopping at, say, Walmart or at Snooks, there are certain products that may have that Snooks brand name on it. Those are known as dealer private label brands. Next, you have your generic goods. Non-branded products that usually sell at a sizable discount compared to national or private label brands. So think about pharmaceuticals. Often you may find a drug that's considered a generic drug. So it is the same product as a brand name. It just doesn't have that brand name attached to it. And then knockoff brands, these are illegal people. That's when someone is illegally using the name of Nike or a Gucci or a, a Michael Kors illegally and making their products, putting that name on that, but it's not the original product. Okay? Branding equity. The value of the brand name and associated symbols. So again, I'll use the Range Rover. Range Rover is known as a luxury car designer. The Range Rover name has value to it because when you're buying a Range Rover, it is considered to be a luxury vehicle. Brand loyalty, the degree to which customers are satisfied like the brand and are committed to further purchases. So some may say they will only purchase cars made by Ford Motor Company. <clears throat> that is considered brand loyalty. I have a good friend that only wears Adidas. So brand loyalty is when your loyalty is to a certain constant company because you like that product that you're receiving from them. Okay? Here are some of the most famous brands. This list came out in 2019. This list will probably still be in a similar order here in 2023. So the Apple brand name, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, etc. And you can see the actual value from these brand names. So yes, I know you iPhoners. Yes, I am team Android, by the way. But I know those people who have an iPhone, they live by the iPhone name, the iPad, all of those good things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sticking with my Android, okay? Okay. Six rules for branding. First, keep it simple. Don't make the branding too complicated. Don't just improve, but reinvent your sector, okay? So I mentioned the Range Rover. What Range Rover has done they now have a group of vehicles that are not as pricey as the Range Rover. 
but they're still under that same brand name. So when people buy those cars, they're viewing it as they're receiving the luxury, but at a cheaper price. Embrace those big ideas about your company. Use strong symbols for a customer to easily identify. So I think we're all quite familiar with the Nike symbol. Give customers a reason to seek out your company. So why should someone purchase your product? Communicate regularly with your customer base. So that's why now, if you notice, if you buy anything online, if you look at anything online, you will be bombarded with emails about their products because companies now are using artificial intelligence to communicate on a more consistent basis with their customer base. Okay? Next, brand awareness. How quickly or easily a given brand name comes to mind when a product category is mentioned? So for a quick test, if I was to mention luxury vehicles, what brand comes to mind? If I was to say athletic gear, what brand comes to mind? If I mention suits, what brand comes to mind? So these companies want to be a point where when you mention a certain product category, that their product is going to be mentioned. Consumers reach a point of brand preference when they prefer one brand over another. So perhaps you prefer Nike over Adidas, or it could be vice versa. When consumers reach brand insistence, they will not accept substitute brands. So now again, I have a friend that will only wear Adidas apparel. That's called brand insistence. Okay? Brand association is linking a brand to other favorable images, okay? So now we're linking our brand to other favorable images to make our brand stick out even further. Then we're going to have actually a brand manager. That's a person who has direct responsibility for one brand or one product line. So for those who are looking at a career in marketing, you may become a brand manager and you will have a lot to do with the product development for a company. So if you're a brand manager, you handle all the elements of the brand's marketing mix. So now for those who like social media, uh, again, marketing might be an area you might want to consider going into as a career choice. Okay. Next. We have the new product development process. How do we develop new products? Well, the odds are a new product will fail or high. So there's a high chance that your new product is going to fail. But that shouldn't keep you from trying. So new product potential could be whether 3D printing, streaming TV, virtual reality, examples of possible new product development that's already on the rise we talk about vehicles electric cars flying cars examples of new product development generating new product idea it takes about seven ideas to generate one commercial product however that one could be a breakthrough product utilize employees research and development, suppliers as well to get new ideas about a potential product and our service. Okay? So stay tuned for the conclusion of our Chapter 4 video dealing with product and product development. Bye-bye.